for joining us for the Department of Management virtual information session. Um, my name is Tom Crash. I'm our Director of um, Enrollment Communications here at CU Bloomsburg. Um, again, you really appreciate everybody joining us tonight. There's a lot going on this time of the year. You could be doing anything right now, and you're choosing to spend that time with us here in, um, you know, in, in the Zoom room, learning more about the management programs that we have here at CU Bloomsburg. Um, the event should take probably between 30 and 45 minutes. Uh, this event is being recording, uh, recorded. So whether you're watching live or watching the recording again, we appreciate you participating. Um, the first 30 or so minutes, we're going to have a presentation from Dr. Wynn, Dr. Campbell, and Dr. Granzel, and then we're going to open it up to a uh, uh, question and answer period. Um, before I go any further, though, did everybody want to take a moment to introduce themselves? Uh, Dr. Wen. Hello, good evening. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Dr. Lam Wen. I'm the professor and chair of the Department of Management at the uh, Commonwealth University. Um, so uh, to, to, first of all, I would like to say thank you to you, Tom, uh, for hosting this event, for giving us an opportunity to uh, connect with the student and you know talk about our department the great things about our departments and you know what we do for our students here uh, i appreciate that opportunity and again uh, here we have you know dr granzo and dr campbell you know they can introduce themselves too yep. hi dr granzo hi everybody dr granzo i'm the director of our jeffrey center for supply chain management assistant chair for our department of management i've been teaching at bloomsburg since 2002, I was there part-time for about five years and then they hired me full-time and I've been there since. I teach a lot of our management courses and supply chain management courses and I'm excited to be with you to share the good things that we're doing and hopefully to get you excited about the opportunities that lay ahead for you. Great, thank you. And uh, Professor, Cam uh, Professor Campbell. Hello everybody, welcome to the program. Tom, thanks for hosting. It's great to see my colleagues. Um, I'm actually located at the uh, Lock Haven campus. Uh, but uh, my duties, I'm an assistant chair in the Department of Management, and obviously I work in uh, the sport management program, and uh, one of my tasks is to look to get that up and running on the Bloomsburg campus uh, for future students, so I'm excited to talk about that this evening. Great, thank you. So one of the, you know, part of the reason why we wanted to hold this event um, is because there's so many opportunities that we have to offer in the Department of Management. And, you know, there are certainly um, some of our more well-known and, and notable programs. Um, but we wanted to have, you know, given out, you know, provide an opportunity for everybody to to really kind of do some shopping, uh, to do their due diligence on what program within the department is the best fit. And honestly, um, there's probably going to be multiple programs that you're interested in, which, you um, you might already know this, you have the opportunity to double major. And I know that's something that our faculty will be talking more about. Um, but you have a wealth of opportunities. Um, and you can see some of the programs that we have here. Dr. Ring, can you take us through some of the options that students have in within the in the program? Great, thank you, Tom. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that the Department of Management is the largest department in the College of Business. Uh, we have up to like 800 to 900 students uh, so far. And we offer uh, four majors, uh, business management, international business with seven concentrations and uh, supply chain management and sport management. We also offer minors. Right now we have the four minor management, human resource management, uh, supply chains management and entrepreneurial uh, innovations. So think about this, you know, the our department with the, particularly the management uh, majors here is one of the, the highest seek, you know, uh, degree program, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in the college of business. Uh, you probably ask me why, right? Well, because it's always the job that we actually want our student, you know, to have a good job after graduation. So the degree program we design in such a way uh, that help our student have, you know, increase their chance to get job after that. So with the designs of our curriculum, which we might have a chance to talk about a little bit later, uh, student can, you know, can have a majors and maybe dual majors and also a majors and a minor to, in, like I said, to increase their chance uh, to land the good jobs after the four years, you know. Uh, Dr. Granzo and Dr. Campbell, feel free to jump in, you know. I think you did a nice job on that, Dr. Nguyen. Uh, Tom, why don't you advance the slide and we'll look at the next things. And that gets us into the student experience. So, we, you know, again, from a high level, you saw some of the academic programs that you have. 
um, to, to be able to choose from or to be able to, to pair with each other. Um, but then there are going to be some basic um, common threads that are woven throughout the fabric of each of the four programs in the minors uh, that Dr. Wynn had just mentioned. Um, Dr. Wynn, can you talk us a little bit about our, our commitment to our incoming students? Well, definitely. Uh, again, this is the motto. This is what we are here for, why we're here for. Our commitment is our student success. Okay, so what we do from, you know, a curriculum to, you know, teaching to other extracurricular activities, we gear towards our student success. We provide students with that balanced academic preparation because the way we structure our program, like I said, we include liberal arts foundations, you know, we have a business core, then we have the major core plus these business electives that our student can take, you know, to sharpen their knowledge in the certain areas in, in business. Again, we prepare our student, you know, for a future in the global environment. Um, this includes, uh, you know, very innovative uh, in the curriculum that we're going to talk about later. Uh, our professor is well experienced, you know, with industry experience and, and come back to teach. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, great uh, programs, great organization for our students to do. It's all well-rounded and we all prepare, like I said, for the students uh, to be successful throughout the time here and even after that. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and some of the, the, the items that we might pride ourselves in the Department of Management. Yeah, well, whenever I, I, again, this is my really privilege to talk about this because uh, I'm so proud of this department uh, for many, many points here. So here's some key points. First of all, the exemplary student center teaching and advising. I really love uh, Commonwealth, particularly BU campus here, that our advising is one on one. So when the student join our major here, you know, the student will be advised by the professors, by one of us. We are the people who understand the curriculum very well. We meet with our students, right? Lay out, you know, the path for the four years and even each semester, uh, you know, come up with a, a good schedule for our student to take so that they can graduate, you know, on time, sometime earlier. And also we have a diverse teaching techniques in classroom uh, that we gear towards more of that interactions that, you know, active uh, learning uh, for our students. So that's the thing that I think very unique here. This is my probably third institutions, and I think it's the thing that um, that that we use here and and Commonwealth in general, uh, did very well for our students. And Doctor, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you hit on a really important topic there. So at the at the very beginning, you mentioned about um, professors teaching classes, and if you're a prospective student, you would probably be thinking, well, who else will be teaching the classes? Um, and the reality is, it's not always a, at schools outside of of. CU and, and, and CU Bloomsburg, that might not always be the case. You might have teaching assistants, you might have graduate assistants teaching classes where at, at you know, CU Bloomsburg, you're going to have faculty members with PhDs teaching classes, not a TA, a teaching assistant, not a graduate assistant. And it, it, that is somewhat rare. You, you might think that that happens everywhere. And the reality is that might not be the case. So having these super talented faculty teaching your classes is a big deal. Yes, that absolutely. We're the we're the one who teach the classes. We grade the student, not the student uh, teaching student. Things like that. We do it uh, ourselves here. Of course, we will. You know, the way that we deliver the content is so you know unique. Sometimes in this multi uh, facets, you know, ways of doing things. Uh, we can ask you know industries uh, CEO, you know, company CEO coming back to being a guest speaker. Uh, we do a lot of active uh, learning. Which the next few points I want to talk about that. But in general, uh, that's what we deliver to our student here so that, you know, they can, uh, you know, students have unique ways of learning, right? You, you know, so we try to tailor uh, to the learning style too. You know, again, our focus is the student learning. We want to make sure they learn the most while they're here at, in the uh, Bloomsville campus. And the second point here that I'm so proud of, since um, I, we haven't mentioned this, but the business program, particularly the management, international business and supply chain management, we are accredited by uh, AACSB. Uh, to make it easy to understand, it is the highest accreditations uh, that a business program worldwide can receive. And we are among the top five, six percent uh, you know, of school in the world that receive this high accreditation. That's because we meet their very high standards, including uh, curriculum. 
our curriculum was developed in a very innovative way. And Dr. Granzo can talk more about that too, that the way that we design um, our curriculum is we geared towards industry, right? We do benchmark, we do industries, you know, research to see what kinds of skill sets that the industry requires of our graduates. And then we, we use that and we developed our curriculums. Of, of course, we have to meet the standard as well. So we, you know, put in a lot of effort uh, and we update our curriculum very often. So as a matter of fact, since we have the integrations, right, we actually have a brand new kinds of, you know, proposal for all of our course and program uh, to move forward and get approved uh, by the new uh, curriculum committees. Again, and then we update that when our, our professor, our faculty, you know, when they go to conference, they learn something, you know, new, or they go to a, a industry conference, right? They come back and they, you know, insert, they, you know, they embedded some new skills in those uh, curriculum. Again, the whole idea is to deliver, uh, to help our students, you know, have this knowledge and skills and ability to be able to do well when they graduate, you know, and join the, the workforce. Um, the third point here that probably one of the best points that I'm really proud of here uh, is actually our faculty, our team of faculty. I'm very proud of them, uh, what they've been delivering day in and day out. They're diverse, accomplished, and dedicated group of, of faculties here. And what I like about here is that we all came from industry. You know, everybody come from industry, uh, myself included. I, I actually was a ma sales manager before I became a professor. And we are award-winning uh, professor in all area, teaching, uh, research, uh, you know, and services here, right? Our faculty also got certified in the area that they teach, like Dr. Granzo here, he was certified uh, in supply chain, you know. Again, just to tell you that the qualifications of our faculty here, but that's just one part. The other part I am actually more impressed is that they really care and they're really passionate about our students. And I share that with them. I share that with them very, very much. We are here, to teach our students with our heart and our soul. Like I said, we want our students uh, to be successful. And I keep repeating this every time I met with uh, students. My son is only 14 right now, uh, but I already, you know, think about like, you know, my son go to college, okay? So a little today I advise our student, I just told him, when I advise our student here, I picture these are my kid, my, my son, you know. I want to do the best for my son. So I want to do the best for our student here, you know. And that, I think, all our faculty share that here. That passion, that that caring about student is second to none here. I'm serious. So that's the part that makes me really, really proud of this team of faculty here. Yep, I wholeheartedly agree. Absolutely, absolutely. That just um, gave me goosebumps there, Dr. Nguyen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, that, me too. Like again, the, I, because when, when we speak on our real feeling, you know, that's exactly how I how I feel, and exactly how I said today with one of the students who happened to be a football player. He came in for advice, yeah. today. and and that's how I, I told him. You know, I say I really care about you guys, just like I care for my son. You know, I want him to have a good class to take, to have a good schedule, to graduate on time. So there you go. You know. And, and this is a part here, again, that uh, one of the things that I'm really proud of is that we do a lot of experiential learning, uh, which you mean learn by, you know, hands-on by, by, by doing, okay? We have a lot of hands-on projects. We do real-time company case. Uh, we have great simulations, and I need to brag about this. Just today, I just post on our LinkedIn, Department of LinkedIn website that uh, Dr. Campo class, that the uh, finance management and sport class the student actually did a uh, simulation in the class to run a, a, a company, right? And it's a, a global one, not just the, 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 the region one, the global uh, competition. And uh, Peter, can you share the results? Yeah, well, well we're, we're very fortunate. And this is the second uh, year in a row we've been able to do this, but we have one of our uh, teams. It's a business strategy game, it's called. We compete against teams in the class then teams in the United States throughout the, the country and then also globally uh, throughout the world and uh, the team ended the simulation in number one tied um, and also uh, ended up uh, ranked into three out of the four categories uh, overall so we're very proud of their accomplishments and again this is the second year in a row we've had someone ranked number one at the end of the simulation and really what it's about it's running a sport uh, shoe business 
company and being able to uh, sell the product in four different markets. And you start basically from the beginning at a certain point and you have to run it each week and you're competing against all the competition. So we're very proud of the, the accomplishments of the two students this year. Um, and hopefully that's something we can continue. And it gives them real world experiences of running the company. Uh, so we're very proud of them. Yeah, thank you. It's great because, you know, simulation help the student apply what they learn from the classroom, right? Into a simulated situation that, you know, very close to reality and and and, and kind of like showcase their knowledge, their skill, and sometimes their instincts about making the strategic decisions for, uh, for that company. So again, thank you and congrats. That is a, a great result that I've heard today. I just posted it. Uh, and then reflection, you know, like many times as a manager, you know, you reflect on, you know, what's happened and you learn from, you know, the past and learn from the, you know, what you've been through, right? Uh, learn from about, you know, hey, here's some strength, here's some witnesses and and how we can make it better. And, and that's to help our students, to stimulate our student critical thinking. And, and through the problem solving and Dr. Grant's always great at this. I, I attended his class and uh, every time I went to class, there's always students working in group together. If you see that picture right there, you know, uh, when the station with also like a simulation that he ran there, that student, you know, have to make decision on, I think, projects or something. Uh, it, it create that kinds of, you know, environments where very conducive. And our students are free to come up with ideas and with decision uh, to advance the project. So again, that's who we are here. We do a lot of great work uh, in a classroom with our students. Uh, there's no longer that kind of boring, you know, behind the podium lectures anymore. Uh, if a student come to uh, BU here, uh, they can actually, you know, learn, you know, hands-on things like, you know, like I said, the projects here, the simulations and all that's going on. So we have a big on this. And it's, it's not only is it a richer academic experience, it's one that's more enjoyable. Um, as opposed to just showing up for class and being lectured for 45 minutes or two hour, you know, however long the class is set for. Um, and you'll walk away not only with your degree, but you're going to build your resume at the same time. And the, but the process of building your resume through some of these other experiences is asking you to apply the things that you've learned. So, again, you're going to learn these things it, it, to a deeper level because you're going to be expected to apply them. So it, it's, it's really a holistic uh, approach. Um, with the department, you know, the Department of Management here and, and kind of what the courses are like. So that way, when you walk across the graduation stage, you're ready to go. Like you've got what you need. So, um, yeah, I think that's really impressive. And speaking of learning, right, we believe that learning is not only in, uh, in the classroom, but it's going to be outside of classroom as well. Right. You can learn a lot more. So we have different venues for students to continue to learn different things, uh, for example, internships. Right. The student can take internship at a company, you know, doing some work there and learn about the companies and learn about, you know, the real world. Why they still in school? And to be honest with you, internship is one of the best way to slide the job. We have students who got job even before they graduate because of the, the internship. Uh, I think Michael Russo, one of our students here, you know, uh, he just got an internship over the summer right, at uh, Pepsi. And he just announced that Tommy that uh, he got a job there. And again, that's just a small snapshot of many other students who, who get a job through an uh, internship. Uh, uh, student organization, this is a, a big deal. Um, uh, we have a big focus on uh, student organizations here. Um, our student organization here is advised by faculty. In the Department of Management itself, we have a couple of um, uh, clubs that for our student with the major can 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 you know learn from each other too. Uh, for example, we have the Society for Advancement of Management. That's it for the management major. Uh, for the supply chain, we have the Association for Supply Chain Management. Correct, Dr. Granzo. All right. Uh, we have the Sport Management Club, very active that organize trips. You know, for our student to go to you know, big events. Uh, for the international business major, we have the global. Uh, business associations, uh, you know, et cetera. Now, what, what we're going to do in this uh, student organization is an opportunity for our student, right, to practice what they learn from the class, right, uh, to also learn about management skill set, organizing events, like fundraising, like meeting with people. Uh, some club, uh, Dr. Granzo, the past, the past month, I believe, he took student to an industry conference. Is that up in uh, Scranton or Wilkes-Barre you did? 
Yes, that was in Wilkes-Barre. So it was a manufacturing day. It was an expo and summit where they basically had, geez, 50, 60 different local manufacturers in Northeast Pennsylvania, Central Pennsylvania. And there was uh, panel sessions about different things related to supply chain and management, manufacturing, a lot of networking. The guest speaker was the COO at Crayola. And speaking of Crayola, I'm very proud. One of our former students, Nick, graduated 2016. He's the manufacturing manager at Crayola. Um, he was an intern at Bloom at Crayola when he was a student. He uh, graduated, went to Amazon, then switched from Amazon to Crayola. He's working his way up on that side of the organization. So that's something that I'm super proud about is our connection that we have to not only industry, but also to a fantastic alumni base. So I think we need to update the slide and say, we got to give a kudos to our alumni as well, because they are fantastic. Yeah. And well, um, other institutions about... I've been at, I haven't seen that level of engagement. Yeah. I'm, that's, that's exciting to me. Awesome. Yeah, no, I'm actually, I'm, I'm planning to talk about our alumni in the zip, but yeah, this is definitely a highlight of, of, uh, of BU here and then and, and Lock Haven as well, you know, in terms of, you know, the support of alumni there. Yeah. And with the organization like this, you know, sometimes, many times, not just sometimes, pretty much every single semester, we uh, have a field trip for our student to go and see company like Dr. Granzo just mentioned, you know, went to Crayola, you know, some other team, the uh, uh, student organization, they go to different organization, you know, like Hershey's, you know, to see actually how Hershey operated their business there. So there's a lot of opportunity, uh, you know, for our student, you know, to get that taste of, you know, real world, you know, and then see like really what's going on uh, beyond the classroom, they learn from that. And also case competition, I mean, there's many case competition going on that our students can participate, uh, you know, again, to enhance the chance for them to learn more about things and to sharpen their analyticals, uh, you know, their presentation skill set, because sometimes they get the case in within 24 hours and they have to analyze, work together and come up with strategic so solution for that. And uh, whenever I talked about this, I always brag about how smart, how bright our students are, uh, because many times we took them to compete against big name school, like Ivy League school, like George Washington University. Our students actually place ahead of these schools, you know, and, and that's what that's what I'm like, what we can do here for our students. Uh, you know, we are small town school, but we are very focused on the student. So and then they learn actually a lot more. Uh, because of that one-on-one, -on -one, because of that caring that I mentioned earlier uh, among, you know, professor and us, and that staff as well, which is my next point here. Our staff in the department, in general, in the in the college and university, they are really, really dedicated, and they work to help our students. Uh, whenever students have questions coming in, they try to help, they try to find resources, uh, you know, for our students here. So again, that's also another point I'm very proud of uh, with, with this department. And that's where we're getting to some of the student organizations. In fact, um, I know we kind of talked about this. Did you guys have anything additional to add about, you know, maybe what participation in the student organization might or how it might enhance a student's experience at, at CU? Chris, you want to talk about this? Sure. I mean, it gives you opportunity to experience industry, tremendous opportunities for networking, leadership opportunities, um, learning in outside of the classroom. Uh, getting better connections with faculty members. There's so many benefits. So I can't emphasize enough. You come to CU Bloomsburg freshman year. You can join as many of these as you want. There's also a lot of other organizations at the whole university, some social, some academic, some athletic. Get involved in as many things as you can. It's one of the experiences that you get through college that you are paying for all of these different experiences. So you want to maximize the value that you can get and you maximize it by not just doing things in the classroom, but engaging in all these extra and co-curricular activities as well. Can I add though, I think the student also gained some value here is by being more confident, you know, because now they run the club, they, they, you know, they meet in group, they, they brainstorm activities and things like that. They are very confident. I, I believe that. I mean, I saw some students from the, from freshman all the way to senior and go through clubs and, and organizations like this. They more mature, you know, by the time they graduate with the experience, with the activity that they deal with. And they, they could take the leadership role, you know, in these uh, student club. 
that practice their leadership skill right there. And also, it's also boosts their resume. Many times when they apply for a job, you know, when it's, you know, the, the employers see that they have a lot of activity, particularly uh, leadership in clubs and student organization, that's what they want. The employers want to, to know what you do outside of classroom, what you gain, what you learn out of it, right? So joining this uh, student organization, particularly become a leaders of this organization is, is tremendous uh, for our students. And it adds a lot of values uh, to their resume when they apply for a job. Yeah, I, I know. So I follow, I think, it's, is it the Global Business Association? I always follow them on Instagram. You guys all, I mean, you're doing stuff every week. Um, same thing with the Sport Management Club. Again, the activities, it, there's just a lot of things going on. Again, it's meant to amplify the student experience. Um, you know, so there's there's definitely a lot to be offered there for sure. Um, and that's where we get in, into the coursework comparison. So again, we, we've talked a lot about the student experience. Now we might get into some of the things that are a little more um, major specific, right? So we, you know, you know, we'll talk a little bit about what you're going to study if you decide to go into one of these majors. And as prospective students, this is one of the things that might help you help inform the decision you make about what you study when you when you go to Bloomsburg, right? Is you might be wondering, well, man, if I major in supply chain, how is that different than international business? Or if I major in business management, what how does that differ from internet or from uh, sport management, right? Um, so th that's one of the you know one of the big reasons why we wanted to make sure we kind of took you behind the scenes here about you know helping you understand this is what it means to be a major in business management. Um, so, uh, Doctor Ring, would you be able to kind of give us a high level overview of the coursework in, in the business management program? Great. Um, so the way that we structure our cur curriculum here is, is under what we call umbrella of the BSBA, right? Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. So management is one of the concentrations in there. So the structure, the way we structure it, like I said earlier, we provide a liberal art foundation up to 60 credits a student can take. We also share a business core with other concentration in the College of Business, such as marketing, finance, ITA, things like that. But then we go to the management concentration core here. And you can see here, right, including human resource management, ethics, leadership, managerial decision making, supply chain, OB, you know, original behavior, international management, and our capstone uh, business policies. This would give you the core knowledge, skills uh, in management, right? In addition, we also have business electives that our, our students can explore, you know, some different thing as well. Particularly, like I said, with we can combine right these business electives uh, towards using that towards another major. Like you know, for example, the one of the popular uh, dual major that we have here is the management and supply chains. Or you can do a management majors and a supply chain minor or uh, entrepreneurial innovation minors here, because we can use that elective again. We want to give you. Uh, you know, a framework of foundations of management, but then with that minor, with that very specific uh, business uh, functions, knowledge and skill set, that would help you land the job um, a lot more, you know, uh, the, 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 the possibilities is a little higher uh, when you have that focus, you know, uh, skill sets in there. Yeah. Uh, Christian, you want to share anything else about this? Yeah, so I always tell students that we need to leverage the assets that we have. And so since we are built on a common core, sport management is a little bit different, to be honest. Dr. Campbell will tell us about that. But if you're looking at management, international business or supply chain management, we want to leverage that common core that we have and we want to leverage those business selectives. And so I've done the, the workout for multiple students now who are double majoring in management and supply chain management. And they can do it in 120 credits, which is what you need to graduate anyway. And that's with one free elective left where you could do international business and management, maybe international business with a human resource management concentration and management double major. It might be 123, 126 credits, which basically just means for one or two more courses than you would otherwise need to graduate, you can come out with multiple career paths open to yourself, a resume that's gonna pop and people are gonna compete over you. So, Maximize return on assets. It's one of the ma major things we always emphasize in business. And we try to emphasize that with our students when they're maximizing the, the value of their educational degrees. Yeah, you have this, this four-year window when you go to college, a four-year window to get ready for the rest of your life in your career. 
So while you're a student at Bloom, what you want to do is take the most, you know, take advantage of, of every single opportunity you have, because once you graduate, that door is closed. You, you, you can't go back and redo it again. So when you're here, again, make the most out of it. I think that's what Dr. Granzall and Dr. Wynn have been, have been referring to. I'm sorry, Dr. Wynn, I think he had something to add. Yeah, why don't we check the other two uh, programs, Tom? Yeah, sure. We'll get to sport management. Yes, absolutely. And then we get into, um, again, here's some of the coursework for uh, supply chain. Uh, Dr. Granz, are you able to walk us through this, some of the major courses in supply chain? Sure. So just a couple of things I wanted to emphasize. Technology rich throughout it has to be because of being a supply chain. A lot of it is technology driven, artificial intelligence, machine learning, various systems that we use in supply chain. So that's all there. We also have some marketing focus and customer relationship management, which you have to have. And then we also get into logistics, which would be transportation, it'd be sourcing, purchasing. We get into managing business processes, supply chain operations, some of the core of operations management, whether that's in production, manufacturing, or service environments. And we also get into how you manage innovation that happens in the supply chain all the time and how we, we create new opportunities for businesses there. So uh, we have a future slide that will kind of show you some of the different job opportunities that are available in supply chain. Because I know a lot of times um, supply chain became a very popular thing during the pandemic of all times because we saw all the shortages and suddenly it was like, oh, the supply chain, the supply chain, the supply chain. And now with the inflation we're dealing with, it's because of the supply chain, supply chain, supply chain. But people don't necessarily know what career opportunities there are in there. So I'm excited to show you those in a couple slide, couple slides. But bottom line is all industry benchmarked. Um, all relevant for what you would need in industry, you could go in multiple different career paths, think primarily logistics, sourcing, purchasing, or operations would be the, the, the main areas that you would end up in if, if you took supply chain. Well, and I think one of the things that's interesting too, when you look at these course titles, in a lot of cases, those course titles also equate to a career, right? So, um, logistics is a, is a great example, right? So like th that's a course that teaches you about a subject, but like when you go into the field that that actually equates to a career is, you know, being a logistician, right? Or you have someone who's working with a, the customer relationship management or the CRM, that, that those are software programs. Like that's, that's a career. Um, you're learning about a field, but in, in a way you're also learning about, no, this is one of the jobs you might be able to get into if you're interested in that subject. If you, you know, you take the, um, the the supply chain cash flow and profitability. You're like, oh, I really like that. I, I like supply chain, but I like this topic in particular. That's the direction I want to go in. So that's it's a very exciting idea. topic, Tom. Believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, it's it's supply chain finance right now is one of the the hot topics in global supply chain and optimizing the flow of cash through global supply chains is is really a fascinating topic. Well, and, and again, and, and I'm sorry, I could I could wax poetic about this department for a while, but you know the other thing too is that we have this enormous ecosystem within the Department of Management. Um, so, like you know, Dr. Granzel, you you mentioned all right. Well, this is a big topic within you know the global business environment. Well, we also have the International Business Program. When we get to the Sport Management page, they're going to talk about the international aspect of, of sport management and the fact that we that, that this is a big deal for us that this entire department we've we've kind of uh, reinforced through resources that, hey, like we want to make sure we, we can offer these degree programs because they're all complementary of one another and they can each enrich the experience. Um, like there's probably some courses here that if we didn't have an international business major, we might not be able to offer that class in business management or in supply chain or in sports management. So the, the, the department itself is, is, is really impressive in that regard, but I, I will stop talking. Sorry about that. Uh, but that's where we get into international business. Dr. Wynn, uh, would you be able to walk us through the course right. of international business? You just hit the nail right on the head when you say this, because even we call it international business, but actually it's a management degree. But in this case, we prepare our student to be a successful leader in the global environment, right? We try to develop the, uh, what we call a global mindset, which means they have uh, appreciations of cultural differences. We increase their global competencies. Uh, you know, I appreciate the difference. So so nowadays uh, in the world of business, you can tell, right? Everything related to global. We talk about supply chains, also global, right? The pandemic, you know, happened. It impacted the entire world. So this degree, uh, like I said, management, kind of management degree, but we prepare our students. What you can see, the core classes here, we talk about international finance, international marketing, international management. Uh, but what is unique about this degree was that 
we require students uh, with a short-term uh, faculty lab trip uh, staying abroad. So the student would travel with the professors uh, to a foreign country to learn firsthand the experience about cultural differences, about business activities. Now, supply chain, we heard so much about now, uh, not only China now, but Vietnam, India uh, have emerged, right, to be the new destination for uh, foreign investment, right? So our student, uh, particularly at BU here, like we took our student uh, to Vietnam, right, to see really an emerging economies and see a lot of more of foreign companies, U.S. companies. Now they have the business there, right? They went to see like Adidas, like how people make the Adidas shoes that then later on can be sold back to our countries here. So, you know, they see firsthand how it worked. Uh, they saw how the company making, uh, you know, Old Navy and gaps, you know, uh, you know, uh, pants and shorts. Uh, so, you know, those are the product that we actually use here in our country, but these manufacturers somewhere else. Uh, that's the, we talked about the global supply chains. And another unique thing about the international business uh, major is that it has built in uh, one of the students, if they declare this major, they got they get to choose one of the seven and soon to be eight concentrations in there, including accounting, uh, finance, ITA, economics, global uh, and policies, uh, uh, HR, uh, marketing. And one of the new one that uh, I'm not sure we should jump early to talk about, but um, uh, this concentration in supply chain, it makes total sense that we have the concentration in supply chain management under the umbrella of the international business major. Um, I just want to give example here, a last, last grad, group of graduate students from the program, we got uh, what are our students here? International business uh, with a marketing uh, concentration, but she took a minor in supply chain management. Well, guess what? She just landed her job at Boeing working with the clients in uh, South Korea, you know? So that just, like you hit it very well, you talked very well about the department of management, the, 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 the majors and the minor, all the things that we offer here. It's like a, a total package, you know, to prepare for our students in this arena. And I really like that point because really uh, with international business, you can combine with supply chain management. And you talk about sport, right? Sport had our, our sport program, uh, in the uh, the master, we have two tracks, and one of them is international sport management, yeah. right? So it it's really connected, and I'm really glad you said that because that's really what we offer here at BU. Yeah, it's it's like if we were to offer one of these programs in isolation, and we didn't offer the other three, that one program that exists would not be as strong because there were the the other programs that existed in the department that helped provide some optionality and variability. Um, no, I, I think that's yeah. I, I, that, that's one of the things that I that I've noticed, and yeah, it's it, it provides a lot of additional opportunities, and that's where we get to uh, sport management. Uh, Professor Campbell, would you be able to take us through the coursework in, in uh, the sport management program? Actually, which by the way, this is Bloomsburg, you know, newest major um, that, that came out of integration. So we're really excited for this one. Yeah, well, you know, thanks again. Um, we're very happy to be housed in the Department of Management. It gives us access to classes and all the other programs which supplement everything we're doing and support what we're doing. So that's always a good thing. But the BS in sport management is a standalone major. Um, so we do have 120 credits, 60 in the major, which are sports-specific classes. And then we have the uh, 45 in general education, 15 electives, which we look to integrate with other programs. Um, the classes that are listed there are um, some of the fundamental ones that we look to have in the, the, the uh, program. The sport business finance is the 400 level class uh, where they'll do the business strategy game simulation. Um, and they also will sometimes do that at the graduate level. Uh, we do have the BS in sport management, but we also have an, the MS in sport management, uh, which has those two tracks, concentrations that were discussed, sport management and international sport management. And we're very excited about those um, because it gives the students an opportunity as incoming freshmen, if they have a 3.0, the ability to get their bachelor's and their master's in a four-year period. Um, so that's a pretty good achievement if you're able to uh, keep up with the coursework and, and get that. And through all these courses, we're excited because there's a lot of uh, experiential learning activities within the courses, whether it's fundraising within the community relations class for a local charity, 
or in the governance class looking to set up a youth sports league or in the um, just looking at the other classes there coming up with a marketing campaign for a new sports product in the sport marketing management class, sales, sponsorship, fundraising. And we've had students work with some of the minor league baseball teams um, and actually go on phone calls uh, for them to try and make sales from cold calls to actually move them up through the rankings. So we have different classes doing different programs and we looked to integrate there. Also, we did talk a little bit about the clubs and the importance of those. Um, that experiential learning aspect and getting the students into the industry to meet people is vital for us. And through the Sport Management Club, they get the leadership experience from working on it. But we also get opportunities for our students to go to career fairs or take students to the college football championships, for instance, down in Houston. We'll be taking 10 students down to work those in January. Um, when two faculty members will be supervising. We'll be down on the field for pregame setup and activities, and, and we'll be not just there for the actual game, but we will be there three or four days before for the whole festival of the college football championships because they will have concerts, they will have uh, fan showcases, and they'll have other activities. A 5K race is taking place too. Our students will be working these events and get an experience that they can then put in their resume and showcase when they go looking for interviews. Other things we're looking at, the NCAA Women's Final Four in Cleveland, the uh, World Wrestling Championships are going to be at Penn State in April. We have our students uh, volunteering and working over there. And also we'll go to the uh, sports business, sport management business conference down in Indiana, PA um, in uh, April as well. So we have a lot of activities coming up and we always stress and try to supplement our coursework. But the profet Everybody's going to get the coursework wherever you go. But it's the faculty, it's the students, it's the interaction and the experiential learning opportunities that make it what it is that are going to help you get your career afterwards. And the one thing that I know Christian and, and uh, Dr. Newing uh, alluded to is just the strength of the alumni coming back and providing opportunities and mentoring to the students. That's crucial and vital in our program. And we have students with the Cleveland Cavs, with uh, the Toronto Raptors, um, and they've come onto our campus and interviewed students, even just this semester. So we're, we're, we look to take advantage of all the resources and the assets we have to help to promote and market the students at the universities. And we're excited because all of that is coming to the Bloomsburg campus. Um, with the sport management club being added and with the activities with alumni panels uh, we're looking to get the same opportunities and currently they are available uh, for the students in all three of our campuses with the integration uh, to succeed but again the coursework is there but it's having all the other parts that put it into life uh, that really make the difference Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And then uh, that's where we get into the ZIP program. So the ZIP program is an acronym for the uh, Ziegler Institute for Professional Development. Um, and I, that would make sense because we are the, the Ziegler College of, of Business. So Dr. Ren, would you be able to walk us through what the ZIP program is and what that means for students? So uh, well, I think this program is, is really, to me, is a wonderful program uh, because we see the need for students to learn soft skills as well as outside of the classroom. Like I said, right, the learning is not just take place in the classroom, it could be outside of the classroom. So this uh, ZIP program here is the opportunity that our students can learn more from alumni, from, uh, you know, people in with industry experience. They actually come back to campus for two days in a row, again, without getting paid. So they satisfy their time. You know, some people make decent money, right? With their time, so valuable. They come back and they interact with our students. We have workshop, we have panel discussion, we have, um, you know, keynote speakers. Again, the whole idea is to provide our students that soft skill. Sometimes it's just a connection, networking opportunity. Right. Uh, one of the events that I sat there with um, a panel discussion, well, next to me is, is the CEOs of First Columbia Bank. Well, now it's a Journey Bank. It just uh, changed the name uh, with the merger. But uh, Mr. Lance, his time is valuable, but he willing to come back, you know, to, to share with the student all of the experience and provide our student with advices, with things that help our student prepare. Uh, when they join the workforce. So I think it's tremendous. I know Dr. Granzo did many um, activities during this uh, event. I encourage my students, I always told them, 
please join this uh, uh um, you know zip conference because you learn a lot uh, from these these folks you know from the alumni that come back and like I said again um I really appreciate uh, the alumni Bloomsburg and I think Lock Haven and, and in general uh we have a very strong support for alumni they will come back and even students who just graduated last year when I asked them, you know, to come back and share the experience, like how to search for a job, how to transition from uh, college life to like, you know, real world industry. And they came back and they share as recent as uh, about two weeks ago, my club, the uh, Global Business Association, we invited one of the students who just graduated. So now she got a job and she come back and she share with student her, 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 you know, experience, which is to me is so valuable for our students uh, just to prepare them. So again, this is a great, great, uh, I, I would say, opportunity uh, for our students to learn outside the classroom, to network with our alumni, to network with each other, and get ready uh, for a career down the road. Christian, you want to jump in and say anything else? No, I, I know time-wise, Tom, I think we're close on time here, so I don't know if we want to move through the last couple slides quickly or yeah know? absolutely uh, honestly with, with this uh, with this these programs we could talk for six hours there's just so much to talk about so and i know we talked a lot about the professional experiences already and some of the options that are kind of embedded within each of the degree programs so students are making sure they walk away with, with some meaningful resume builders as well so they're ready to get that first job and um then here's the the, the rest of the team I, I know dr Wynn um thought it was really important to make sure that he could see this is the whole squad, right? This is who you're going to see in classes. And, and this is, and, and Professor Campbell made a really good point. A lot of times the coursework is going to be standard no matter where you go, right? We're all accredited. Well, I would say um, those of us who are um, accredited um, in all of our programs are, by the way, um, we're all going to be held to the same academic standards in terms of what courses we require. One of the things that's different is, you know, there's only one Christian Granzel and he's here. There's only one Lam Wynn and he's here. There's only one Peter Campbell and he's teaching here, right? So this is one of the things that is a differentiator is the fact that, again, we've got faculty that teach classes and they're not doing research. They're not, you know, um, working on their own careers or helping build yours. Um, and, and they're going to be the people advising you, right? Like in, in, you're, we're talking about your career, right? So you don't want to leave that up to a Google search or a LinkedIn search, right? You're getting really good consultative advice from faculty who previously worked in, in the field that you might be interested in. So the, the, our faculty team has, has a lot to offer here for sure. And I'm sorry, was there anything else you wanted to add, Dr. Ryan, about, about the faculty? Again, I just want to show my appreciation uh, to this group of wonderful, excellent you know, colleagues that I have, you know, privilege and honor to work with. They are the backbone of the department, you know, uh, they do well in the classroom, they interact with our students, uh, you know, and I think that the caring is beyond just the, uh, inside the classroom. Like I said, we advise our students with career. I know a lot of students, even gra after graduated, and when I talk to them, they still mention Dr. Granzel. You know, like advising them and, you know, uh, would continue with their career. So this is the group of people who day in and days out will do their hard work to help, you know, train our students, to help educate our students, well, to make sure they are successful. So again, like I said, I, if you if I have more time, I continue to talk about this group of, of, of my colleagues here. Uh, really an honor to be to work with them, you know, because they, they are the one that really of the backbone of this department. And like I said, the student coming into this department, they will be pleased, they will be happy uh, with you know the professionalism, the qualification and the, the passions that these group of folks who can share with our students who care about them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and that's where we get to life after graduation. Um, would you be able to talk you know, quickly about some of the career options that students have as they're leaving? Um, and, and each degree program is going to provide a unique set of options. Um, so I, I believe this is representing international business and business management. Yes, absolutely. And like I said earlier, right, uh, the goal for every student who come here after college is what? A good, not just a job, a good job, right? So uh, the management degree that the way we design it, it we call it a general perspective where we, we teach our student a little bit of everything in a business like different function, like accounting, finance, operation, come all the way to strategic analysis and, 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 and decision-making, right? So with that kind of, you know, general perspective, our student can have a largest opportunity, uh, you know, to land a job there. So for example here, 
Uh, and of course, uh, and then the minor kicks in with the, uh, we call the uh, specific skill set of area. So I would make an example here. The first one here is Jen Bullets. She was a management major with a human resource management minor. And if you look at her title right now, what is it? Human Resources Director at Dollar General, right? So literally, we train our students so that they can, they are capable of functioning uh, in real world and get the job that really what we train them to do. And they excel in the in 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 the corporation, right? Because when you first get out, of course, you're not a director, but you start from you know HR specialist and into a supervisor, and now once you get into uh, get promoted uh, to become a director, uh, or Mariam Sarkassian's, uh, she has a she was a management major, but she studied abroad for a year in France. And now currently she's doing very well uh, at Eurofin, so come down in, I think, Lancaster, Reading areas. Uh, she's graduated about four years now. I think she got promoted twice <laughs> already. And uh, actually, uh, Dr. Granzo is the one that, she, you know, she come to me because he said, Dr. Granzo actually uh, talked about, you know, some research going on. Uh, and then I, actually, uh, Mar Mariam and I, we actually worked on a, a research project in, in ethics and we got the publics in one of the good journals in management. And if you look, take a look at here, right? Our student is very well-rounded and you can see the, 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 the type of job and the type of the, the industry that they actually work in. You can see real estate here. Uh, you can see a brand, uh, social managers, you know, in marketing. So like I said, that is what a management degree can offer to our students. You know, with a general perspective like this, and then with a, a minor to to kind of go into a specific area in business, that would help them land the first job and then advance in the corporate ladders. Um, and I believe this is a supply chain, Dr. Granzel. Yes, I'm just so excited to see Dr. Nguyen's face light up when he was talking about those former students. And I think if there's anything to take away from this evening, it's him talking about those former students and how how excited we get to see them be successful because that's the commitment that we bring every day to you as a student. I think Dr. Granzel might have uh, might have frozen here. Um, so you can see again that just a wide variety of options that students graduating from the supply chain program have um, after they, they they graduate. And, and you can see, you know, for all of these um, departments, they're placing people in fields in that Ellsworth. are- Some of the different types of companies that students end up working for in supply chain. Sorry, Dr. Granzo, you had um, you had frozen there. Um, so I, I, I tried to pick up where you left off. Um, so did you have anything else to add about some of the career options or, or what the, the future of the field might look like? No, that's good. You did a nice job, Tom. Thanks for picking me up. Yep, yep, no problem. And then that gets us into uh, the sport management program. And this is a, a small, a small smattering. There's certainly plenty, plenty more out there, uh, Dr. or Professor Campbell. Yeah, these are just some of the examples of the students that uh, are out there. We're actually hoping to touch base with Jacob when we take the students down to the college football championships um, in January. He's now with the Houston Astros and got a ring for winning the championship the other year. Uh, we also have the director of the sport facilities at Texas A&M, uh, Mr. Gummo is one of our students as well. So we're hoping to uh, take the students to tour and to see how big time division one athletic programs operate as well. Uh, Jack is with the United States Olympic Paralympic Committee. Um, Ryan down in Florida State, uh, helping to run their facilities. And Ellie is uh, met life over at um, uh, helping with customer relations and fan services. Um, I always get a kick out of Ellie because I still remember she called me up from the airport. Um, she was doing a study abroad for a semester, basically really nervous and unsure of whether this was what she wanted to do. And when she flew and came, we we couldn't get her to come back. Uh, she enjoyed the experience so much, but came back and had some wonderful opportunities. Uh, we currently have a young man um, who is uh, finished her undergrad program. He's currently in the master's program with we'll this semester. Right now, he's working with Quint Events, a uh, full-time job, but finishing his master's. And currently, he's uh, flying all over the world doing fan experiences for Formula One races um, and loving life. Uh, so these are the sorts of experiences we're hoping to get for our students um, on the New Commonwealth University and all three campuses. 
Thank you. And then um, one last moment here too, is the other alternative that we have is, is um, to continue your climb. Um, and we have the, uh, an MBA program and the master's in sport management, both of which are offered in an accelerated format where you can either um, finish both degrees in four years, your bachelor's and your master's, or it could be delivered in a four plus one format where it's uh, you do your four years and then uh, one additional year afterwards. So, you know, we've tried to condense that and really um, help, give you some opportunity to, to uh, continue um, to advance your, your academic career and give you the credentials you need to advance into those management positions that you might be interested in down the road. Um, so plenty of opportunities there within that ecosystem that I mentioned earlier. So we talked a lot about, um, you know, what we have to offer. Um, and certainly there's no shortage of this. Again, we're, we're kind of cutting it off. We could literally go for another hour easily. There's so much to talk about here. Um, so for those of you who are uh, who are watching the recording, we really appreciate it. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, get into the Q&A right now. But if anybody has any follow-up questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to Dr. Wynn, uh, Dr. Granzel, or Professor Campbell, um, or myself. We are happy to help in any way. We really we, we work for you. So if you want to know more about the program, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and we'll kick off the Q&A again if you're watching the recording please let us know if you have any questions and uh have have a great night